in this place in the first place. <laughs> uh, how many of you work on customer experience? Anybody who works on customer experience? There. Yeah. There. Lots, lots. Yeah, nice. I mean, it's interesting to see uh, many people who are from the customer experience background. This is a very new field. Am I blocking this? Oh, okay. Okay. So, uh, it's, it's very interesting to see so many people from customer experience. About four, five years back, when I did a Google search, uh, to best of my capabilities to find about customer experience, I got one blog. I didn't see any companies, I didn't see anybody who spoke about customer experience from India three years back. Now, if you, if you go to any of these companies, be it the oracles of the world, or uh, Infosys, or Vipros, or any company, Accenture, CAP and Nitro, you take the name. They all talk about customer experience. And that's what I'm going to talk to you about today. So, what is, what is exactly customer experience? And, and I come from an open source uh, field where I, I speak a lot uh, at uh, bar camps. So please feel free to speak out. Beyond right? User experience. Beyond user experience, exactly. So as a user, how many of you are user experience guys? You raise your hands higher, man. You, you're a user experience guy. Yeah, like that. <coughs> right. <laughs> now, uh, he said it's something a uh, little more than user experience, right? How many, uh, what's the most hated word in user experience field? User experience. That's one, yeah. <laughs> Anything more? Uh, similar, yeah. How many of you have heard this word of 1024 by 768? Do you want to get out of it? <laughs> do, you, do you want to go to the next level? How long have you been hearing this word? 1024 by 768. Right? So the idea of customer experience is to move out of your comfort fields of designing forms and fields and task flows and stuff. You've been doing that for a while. We all have been doing that for a while. Let's get out of it. And let's talk about customer experience. How many, uh, let me ask you this question. Tell me a bank that everybody loves. You love. Tell me a bank you love. There. HDFC. HDFC. Why, why do you love that bank? Huh? Sad. <laughs> That's hardly a choice. Uh, tell me a mobile phone connection you love. Airtel? Really? Vodafone? We, we never get a, a conclusive answer. Because all of them suck. <laughs> really? All of them suck. Right? So if you, if you, if you go to a um, ICC Bank, for example, uh, even being a privileged customer, <coughs> right? This is how each of these guys look like. I have no idea what happened. Is that, is that not coming through? the problem. Just give me a second. Small customer experience problem. <laughs> Internet user experience problem. <laughs> yeah, that's my, yeah, that's my desktop, yeah. Uh, this is for my manager, so don't bother about it. <laughs> <laughs> right, so this should work. Yeah? Oh, that was the pen drive I was accessing previously. Sorry, forget about it. 
uh, <clears throat> so so we like certain companies and we hate certain companies tell me if i'm blocking the view uh, why is that it's not always a rational decision right so it, it's not always possible that uh, that uh, you say airtel is nice or hdfc is nice right it, it's not a rational decision you might have a shop uh, near uh, 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 in the community where you get say uh, people come and shop and uh, almost 80 percent of your items are sold in a week and you think that's a wonderful customer experience it's, it's not right the moment some other company opens a shop uh, opens a store next to you you're going to lose the customers customer experience as a whole talks about how a customer is being treated with a company right so uh, so I'll, I'll 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 talk this whole thing over a couple of stories right so as to start let me start with the story of lily robinson lily robinson manage if there is a feedback okay uh, lily robinson uh, is three and a half years old she was one day uh, shopping with her mother in a company called stainsbury's how many of you are familiar with uh, uk retail market chain there you go yeah stainsbury's stainsbury's is a huge company they're 145 year old company they have like huge money they're like walmart in uk right so this guy, this lady, uh, Lily Robinson, all of this size, she was shopping. And she came across a bread called Tiger Bread. And her mom put that in her shopping cart. She says, why is it called a Tiger Bread? The, 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 the patterns on this looks like a, a, a giraffe bread for me. Right? She asked this question. Her mother didn't have much idea what, what the hell is happening. She said, you should ask your, probably ask these people. And she did. Dear Sainsbury's, why is tiger bread called a tiger bread? It should be called giraffe bread. Don't you think it makes sense? Right? Now, if you send one of such emails to any of the customers or corporates that you are interacting with on a daily basis, how much time do you think it will take before it goes into trash bag? It will take three minutes. They, they'll, they'll throw the stuff. They don't care. She is three and a half year old, and she doesn't have any money to spend. right? And why do I care about a bread which has been in the market for like 25 years. But they did. There's a person called Chris King. And there is a web, uh, Facebook page. If you really like it, go and, go and like this page. It's called Chris King is a legend. He responded. He responded with all the warmth that he would respond to one of his skin in this way. Can you read this? Okay, I, I'll explain. So he said, uh, I think renaming giraffe bread to a, uh, tiger bread to giraffe bread is a brilliant idea. And he also apologized to the person who made this long, long time ago. Thought, it looked like the blotches of a giraffe, of a tiger, than of a giraffe. So about 1,50,000 likes on Facebook, and about 50,000 Twitter feeds, they changed the name. They changed the name of this familiar tiger bread to giraffe bread. Now, again, let me ask you, how many people think that the banks give you a wonderful customer experience? How many people think 
that your phone companies give a wonderful customer experience. Most of the time, they do this. They mind their own business. Right? When you, when you walk into a particular store, you see that guy working on a system, some guy arranging something on the shelf, or some guy talking to somebody else. I don't care. I'm a customer. I'm paying. I'm here in front of you. How many of the times have you had somebody attend a phone call when you're, when you're right in front of them? Right? Why? The other guy, it might even be a wrong phone call. It, it might be a wrong number. <laughs> right? I'm, I'm right in front of you. I'm, I'm here to talk about my problems. And you guys are <coughs> chit-chatting on phone. They, they are minding their own business. And they don't really care how the user experience, how the, how the customers feel uh, about handling an experience. <clears throat> so as of now, we don't have any uh, fans for any of the service companies in, 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 in Bangalore, at least. How do, you, how do you think the experience of this hotel was? Do you think it was an excellent experience? How many people love the food for the lunch? One, two, three. Yeah, I, I'm glad I missed it because there are only three people. <laughs> so, the impact, the business impact of this is that 87 percentage will not go back if you have a bad experience. Right, eighty-seven percent of the people, and this is—I—I'll I, I, run through you, uh, run uh, you through a couple of slides, which talks about numbers uh, for people who are inclined to that. And I have a lot more stories which I want to really talk about. So, yeah, that's that. Ninety-seven. If you think none of your people customer, uh, none of your customers complain about your services, ninety-six percent of the unhappy customers do not complain. And 91% just, yeah, it's okay, man. They just leave. They, do, they don't tell you anything. And that, this is typically an Indian scenario. It, in the Indian scenario, it might even be larger. Right? We, we are very, very, very uh, hesitant to give our direct feedback to people. Uh, so for, for, for every customer who is complaining, there are 26 unhappy customers who didn't complain at all. And if you, if you really, fa really feel bad about a particular food, would you talk to your friends? Would you tell them? No, dude, don't go to that place ever. It sucks. 15, every unhappy customer will talk to 15 of their friends. This is a global data. In India, it might be more. More numbers. 50% of the people give one week for a company to respond to you. If they don't respond in one week, they're bad. If, if you don't respond in a, in a week's time, you, you, sorry, uh, you, you go with your competitor. If you don't like Vodafone and they don't respond to your complaint in like a week's time, you go to Airtel. 26% of the people posted a negative comment on Facebook or Twitter or any of the social media. And of these comments which are posted on Facebook or social media or in the Twitter or in the public, 79% of them were ignored by the companies. Nobody cared to respond. How many of you share the similar experience? Nobody cares. Nobody cares how much money you spend. I, I have no idea why these companies make it so difficult for you to spend money for them. You're trying to give them money and they're not taking it. More numbers. And I promise this is the last slide for, uh, about numbers. 58% uh, of the people think that the company is, uh, company is unavailable for comments or to discussion. But when you call, when you, when you call a particular company, how many times have you got uh, to, to 
talk to a real person. They are unavailable. They are busy doing something. Their staff watering their own uh, fire engine. They, they, are, they don't care about you. 57% of people thought they knew about the products that I'm buying more than the company representatives. The company uh, guys didn't have any idea of what kind of uh, insurance policy I hold. I know more about it than the person who is hired to do it. Wh whose job is to know it. 51% of the people didn't get your name right. It might not be a strange name, right? And particularly if you know that most of the back office is handled by Indians, uh, it's not a strange name. And the most important piece of this, 86% of people said they will pay more for this. If I, if your company can give me a better experience, I'll pay more. And this is where the business or the whole industry in India is lacking. There are very few companies who work with customer experience in India. Kingfisher was one. And there are very few companies who still adopt a certain policy systems. What happens in this scenario? When you're absolutely pissed off with what the company is offering you, they leave. They leave. Why do people leave? 68% of the customers believe you don't care about them. And there are more statistics. Now, why is it important for a company to retain a customer? Why do you see Flipkart or Snapdeal or, I don't know, Amazon doing full page Times of India ads? It's not to retain you. It's to acquire new, more people. Why? There, there are competitors. If they do did their job right, people wouldn't leave them, would they? Now, here is another statistic. You should probably, if you're owning a hotel chain, you should probably give your dessert free because that's the cost for customer retention and giving a full meal is the cost for customer acquisition if you if you if you can give one scoop of ice cream free how much will that cost you 25 rupees but if you have to acquire a new customer it's going to cost you 250 rupees which one would you do Right? So this is from the business perspective for the people who are inclined in numbers. Let me get on to a uh, couple of, uh, uh, let me talk about customer experience first and then let me talk to, uh, let me talk about a couple of uh, customer experience stories. Customer experience basically encompasses everything <clears throat> on, uh, I'm sorry, the 10 means I've completed 10 minutes. <laughs> I just have 10 minutes. OK. <laughs> uh, OK. Uh, so um, these are the different uh, aspects through which a person would interact with a company. We call them touch points. It could be a mobile, it could be a print media, it could be a store, or any of these things. So we call them touch points. And each of these things uh, corresponds to a customer journey. When you, when you go about buying something, you go through this journey. Uh, need, you need something, you research about it, you compare different products, uh, then you buy, and then there is an after sales support. At the same time, there's a different journey for, for the company or the service uh, that, 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 that's being offered. So they have an opportunity, they do a research, they ideate and they design, they dis decide on a product, they market it, they sell it, and they service it. When these two journeys coincide, when these two uh, points where these companies uh, understand at each of these points in customer journey, how can I service each of these needs? 
that is when uh, they realize how a, a customer experience can be better. Right? So these are a these are couple of touch points, and it's all because of you I'm running fast. <laughs> uh, touch point. So it could be digital marketing, it could be a hoarding that you see on board, it could be an IVR system that you're calling after, uh, and, and it, could be, it could be anything, right? Uh, uh, how, how, how does a policeman dress? That, that definitely tells you about the service and quality uh, of, of a police service, right? How, how, do a, uh, how do a hotel receptionist talk to you when they, when they walk up to you? When you go say and uh, when you go to them and say, uh, do, you, do you have any hotel rooms free? How do they speak to you? Each of these things are decided based on uh, how each of these points are an impact, uh, an impact point for the customers, uh, and to make an impression about the company. And most companies don't do that. This is a survey that uh, me and a couple of my team members did for about a Bangalore mall, right? We went on a uh, weekday afternoon, so, uh, so it's all pretty and nice and nice and nice this. So uh, here is where. So this is about the connectivity, the parking, the security check, the escalator services, directions and maps, help desk, stores, seating, ATM, food court, restroom, drinking water, offer and other events, etc. The, uh, digital presence of those malls and advertisement. You could see that this is a positive point for the customer where the security check, nobody checked my bags. It's a, it's a positive point for me. I, I could just walk in, nobody cared. I, I could as well have a, bag, a bomb in my bag. Right? It's a, it's a bad thing for the company, good thing for the customer. So this is a touch point analysis. We call this touch point analysis. Each and every opportunity that I have to talk to my customers, right? So this is a typical process that you follow in customer experience pro, uh, in a customer experience session. Uh, and I, I'd like to tell you a couple of stories on this. Discover, understand, design, iterate, and implement. It's not strange. It's, it's something very similar to what, what we are be doing. And Praji had a session on how UX is very similar to CX. Discover. Aviva. You know about Aviva Insurance Company, right? So they, they, they had an interesting study. 75% of the people who called Aviva to ask for some documents called back. And they, uh, so, so they basically they called to say that, can you send me this file? They said yes. And 75% uh, uh, of them called them back uh, in, in, in next three, two, three days, just because they said your document should be in your place in three to four days. In three to four days. It didn't happen. Right? So actual script that Aviva gave their customers was that your document will be in your place within four to five days. So the, because of uh, the unreliance of the UA, UK postal system, they said it should be there. They didn't want to be very clear. They didn't say it will be there. It should be there. So Aviva found out about this problem. They went, researched, and found out, OK, these telecallers are talking about uh, it should be there. So they changed it. And they said that uh, your documents will be with you in eight days. So that's about discovering and researching about the problem. About understanding the problem. Let me tell you a story about a seagull. This was a seaside, seaside town, uh, and uh, when they did an analysis of the people, they understood, they, they figured out, the women in the seaside town get pregnant when seagulls are in town. It's a strange thing, right? Seagulls are not the cause for the pregnancy, right? So this is where you need to understand 
what your data means. They figured out the, the men in that particular seaside town will be in the, in, the, in the sea for like three months. They'll come back and they'll come back with fish and they'll put those scraps on the, uh, in the place. That's when seagull comes uh, and men are just happy to be in town. So there is a correlation, but there is not a causation for, for the pregnancy. So you need to understand what's exactly happening. Uh, then, then you need to design a system. Four Seasons. Uh, Four Seasons is a hotel chain. Uh, one, one fine day, one person was walking out of a hotel room. Uh, and uh, when, he, when he forgot something and he came back to pick something up, uh, he, he saw that somebody is working on his door knob. He asked him, what is that? What are you doing with my door knob? Uh, then he said, you know what? The, the cleaning lady in the next room, she figured, she, she thought that your door is not clicking properly. When I lock my hotel room, and according to Four Seasons policy, there has to be distinctive click when I lock the room. That's, that's, a, uh, that's a certain, that, that, that's what you feel. Uh, you feel comfortable, I've locked the room. It's, was, that's how you design this. Now, you can iterate, the next step is iterating, for example, you go to a hotel, and if you're a foodie, if you go to a hotel, how amused would you be to see a menu uh, printed in your name? Dear Alipta Balab, here is a menu for you today. Right? But can you do that every day? No. Right? After five days, it'll become boring. So that's uh, how you should improve and iterate on your customer experience implementation. Implement this. I'll tell you a story about Kerry Drake. Kerry Drake was on United uh, Airlines flight, and uh, he was uh, on a flight, and he was devastated to know that his flight is getting delayed. The staff figured it out, asked him why, what the problem is. They said, uh, he, she, he said, my uh, mother is in, his, in her dead bed, and I'd like to reach her. So uh, the staff knew this. They radioed the captain. Captain radioed the connecting flight and asked them to hold. All these employees' salaries are at stake because the flight is being delayed. But they implemented customer experience. They implemented the empathy towards the customer. So these are a couple of uh, stories that, that happens from the field. And design thinking is a process that we follow for customer experience and other things. And if people were still inclined with numbers, these are uh, some numbers on how much the industry is gaining or losing from uh, implementing a customer experience program. Uh, 83 billion, 83 bil billion is the uh, loss of dollars that uh, is expected or predicted because you don't implement a wonderful customer experience program in your system. So uh, I guess I'm, I'm done with the time, and I, I don't have uh, much more slides. Uh, so this is all that I wanted to leave you with. This is how the company treat customer experience at the, at the, the present time. Uh, I'm around. I'll be, I'll be around for the next couple of days, uh, next one day. Uh, and I'm uh, available at uh, Harry Gershomsky at Twitter, tw at Twitter. So please feel free to connect and stop me in between and ask me any questions you have. Good to go? Thank you.